So in this video, we want to look at an example of changing the indices of summation so that we can actually apply summation formulas. <clears throat> so the issue that we have is our summation formulas all depend on i starting at 1, or that the index of summation starting uh, at a lower index of 1. <clears throat> so the question is going to be if our lower index of summation doesn't start at a, at a 1, what can we do to the uh, indices of summation so that we can apply the summation formulas? And, and the idea is we just want to modify the indices of summation so that they do start at 1. So I want to take this summation, and instead of having it start at 1, I want to start it, sorry, instead of having it start at 3, I want to start it at 1. So the first thing to notice is that if I'm running from 3 to 5, the difference between the upper bound and the lower bound is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. So if I change the lower bound of summation, I still want the distance between the upper and lower bound to be the same. So in this case, 5 minus 3 is 2. So I'm going to add 2 to 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. So that the distance between the upper and lower bound is still the same. 5 minus 3 is 2. And 3 minus 1 is 2. So I'm running over the same number of terms. <clears throat> Once I make that adjustment, I need to figure out how to adjust i so that the values from the summation are the same as they were originally. And here's what we mean by that. I'm going to go and inside parentheses, I'm going to put the i squared plus the i, and I'm going to leave room to make an adjustment. So what I want to notice is that I decreased by changing the i from a 3 to a 2, I decreased i by two units. So in here, I would want to increase i by two units to reverse the, the fact that I decreased it. And the way you check your work, so I'm going to replace this i also with i plus 2. The way that you check your work is you plug in the lower bound of, in, of summation. So if I do that, I get i plus 2. I get 1 plus 2 is 3. And when I do that, I should get the original lower bound of summation. And if I plug in my upper bound of, uh, of summation, 3, put 3 in here, 3 plus 2 is 5, I should get the original upper bound of notation. So again, the idea is I had to decrease 3 by 2 units to get a 1. So to reverse that process, I increase i by the opposite amount, by 2 units. And your check on work plug the lower and upper bounds of summation in and make sure you get the original bounds of summation back. Now once you do that, you have a lower bound of summation that's a 1 and you'll be able to use the summation formula. So now it would just be a matter of doing some simplifying. I get the sum, uh, this would equal the sum from i equal 1 to 3. <clears throat> I would actually need to square this out. So I would get i squared plus uh, 2 times i twice, so 4 times i, plus 2 squared is a 4, plus the i plus the 2, plus i plus 2, and then combine like terms, so we get the sum from i equal 1 to 3 of i squared, um, plus 4i plus i is plus 5i, and then 4 plus 2 is plus Six And now I am ready to use my summation formulas. Well, we could go one more step. We could break this up into, into pieces. I could say this is from i equal 1 to 3 of i squared plus. So using this summation formula and this summation formula in combination to break all the pieces apart, 5 times the sum from i equal 1 to 3 of i plus the sum from i equal 1 to 3 of 6 and now use the summation formulas. The sum from i equal 1 to 3 of i squared. Here's my i squared formula. My upper bound is n equal 3. Plug in 3 for n, so we get 3 times 3 plus 1 is 4, times 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7, all over 
6 plus 5 times the sum of the i's. Here's the sum of the i's. And if n is equal to 3, then we're going to get 3 times 4 over 2. So 5, we'll get 3 times 4 over a 2. Plus, we have a constant, uh, sum of a constant. So it's going to be the constant 6 times n. n is equal to 3. The constant is 6, so we get 3 times 6. And now we just need to do some simplifying. So 6 will cancel and leave us with the 2 there. So we're going to get uh, 2 times 7 is 14 plus we'll get a 2 there. So we're going to get plus 30 plus 18 is going to be 32 plus 30 is just going to be a 62. <clears throat> so again, I couldn't use the summation formulas directly because they all are dependent, the proofs of them are dependent on the lower summation starting at 1. So one more quick example just going the other way. So here I have the sum from i equal 1 to 3 which is going to be, a, the, the i equal to 0 is going to be a really common index as we move forward in through the next few homework assignments. So again the idea would be you're starting with that lower sum or lower index not equal to 1, and we need the lower index equal to 1 to use the summation formulas. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is make an adjustment to that. So we have the i squared plus i equals, and this time we're going to adjust it up 1. We're going to change the 0 from 0 to 1, which would mean we'd need to change the 3 from 3 to 4. Again, the distance between the numbers has to be the same. 3 minus 0 is 3. 4 minus 1 is still 3. And so this is going to be, and uh, in here I'm going to have i squared plus i, but now I need to make an adjustment. So if I increased my index by 1, I'll need to decrease it by 1 in here. To get them to match and again your check on the work is to plug this index in and see if plugging it in generates the original index so if i plug one in i get one minus one is zero which is what i originally had plug one in i get one minus one is zero which is what i would have originally gotten had i plugged zero in here and if we plug in four we get four minus one is three we get four minus one is still Three, so we've been we were able to tweak those indices, and now you um, expand and simplify. So again, you get i squared here, and then you're going to get minus one times i twice, so minus two i, minus one times minus one's plus one. We have plus i minus one right there, and then if we combine like terms, we get the sum from i equal one to four of, we still have the i squared, we have minus 2i plus i is minus i, plus 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is really just the sum from i equal 1 to 4 of i squared minus the sum from i equal 1 to 4 of i. And now resort to your summation formulas, the sum of the i squareds, which I have here when n is equal to 4, is just going to be 4 times 5, 4 times 5 times 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9 over 6 minus the sum of the i's when n is equal to 4 is going to be 4 times 5 over the 2. So we get 4 times 5 over 2. And we can do some simplifying. Here I've got um, <clears throat> Two will go in each of those, and then the three will go in like that. So we're going to get a two times five is ten times three is a thirty minus two times five is ten. We just wind up with a twenty in this case. <clears throat>